Well, Saad Mosini, you've grown up in Australia, at least 10 years of your youth. Uh, Afghan parents, father an Afghan diplomat who, who uh, left uh, after the Russians invaded Afghanistan. Uh, so what is a guy with an Aussie accent like you doing running a really rapidly mm. growing television, radio, media empire in Central and South Asia with 800 employees in Afghanistan itself? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's a, we're a very small uh, organization relative to the, to the groups that you have to deal with uh, on a regular basis. But for us, uh, it, it's funny you mentioned my father. My father lived uh, in, in, uh, in Tokyo. We were all in Tokyo uh, looking to move elsewhere. Um, and he had the option of Canada, uh, where he, you know, he had a great friend who was a minister in, in Canada at the time. Uh, I think he was a minister in British Columbia or Australia. And he chose Australia because of the weather. But ironically, he moved to Melbourne. Right? So we've, we've had to deal with the rainy weather, and unlike Sydney, which is always so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, getting back to business, we, 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 went w we went back to Afghanistan because, I mean, as, a, as a, a people of Afghan heritage, we, we felt that uh, an enormous opportunity was squandered in the early 90s when the Russians first left. L the Russians left in 89. Dr. Najibullah's regime toppled in 1992. The Mujahideen took over Kabul, and then we had civil war and the beginning of the end, and which, which sort of culminated in the Taliban taking over the country. So a lot of Afghans like us felt that if we, if we had gone back in the, in the early 90s, may, maybe we could have made a difference. So with that in mind, uh, we went back to Afghanistan just to look around, just to see if we could invest um, in something. And we weren't even sure in what. And we had a meeting with the communications minister, and uh, with the sorry, information and culture minister. And he said, listen, we've got some licenses up. You, know, you can potentially buy a license or apply for a license because the Constitution allows you to do so. And we did, and we got some funding from USAID, and we put up some, some of our own money. But the whole idea was a passive investment in a very small venture, and then it sort of so led, to, led to lots more things. Now tell us about the, the scale of your operations now. They've gone beyond Afghanistan, obviously, and you're currently based in Dubai, yes. I think you said. So it's a regional business now, and uh, what was entirely an Afghan business is now sort of a regional business. We have a presence in five countries. Uh, and we air in probably a dozen countries. We have viewers in a dozen countries uh, by so satellite, cable, and terrestrial. Mm -hmm. And of course, millions of viewers uh, by uh, you know, uh, the internet. Digital uh, business is growing very, very rapidly. Um, so we, we do radio, we do television. We produce about 15 hours of content daily in five languages. Uh, we do mostly soap operas and reality TV, and you know we do The Voice in Afghanistan, and we're doing MasterChef in South Asia. And so we do these formats, and we do a lot of soap operas and a lot of uh, news and current affairs as well. But we also do documentaries, and we're involved in feature films. I mean, I was like on a conference call just before uh, a movie starring Bill Murray that's based in Afghanistan that we're going to help on the production side. Um, so it's it's all things media. Uh, in that region. Oh, that's fantastic. Tell me, we've seen obviously a deterioration of um, civic order, mm. increase in violence in Iraq since the uh, Americans pulled out. W are you apprehensive we're going to see a similar uh, deterioration in Afghanistan uh, but, you know, after the withdrawal of the uh, ISAF forces at the end of the year? Uh, yes and no. I think what's important in Afghanistan is that we've seen so much conflict over the last 30 years and no one wants to see, uh, uh, you know, a sort of a protracted civil war or uh, anarchy. Uh, people want order. We have mm. been there and, you know, we've seen it. No one wants to see a return to the 1990s. Um, you know, we conducted this big survey. Uh, the Taliban's approval rating is less than 10 percent nationally. So this whole thing, I mean, th there's this, this narrative, especially out of, Washington, out of Washington, in some quarters that, you know, we need to sit down with the Taliban, talk with the Taliban. Although we agree that, you know, every conflict ends in some sort of a negotiated settlement, there is not that much, uh, you know, in terms of uh, people wanting to sit with the Taliban because the Taliban ideology is no longer acceptable in Afghanistan. So the Afghans want peace. I mean, I think we will have insurgency for a period, uh, and the Taliban will really test the, the Afghan government post-2014 with the Americans' withdrawal. But I, th I believe that, you know, Afghanistan is improving, even now, uh, in terms of the literacy rate, which has gone from 
single digits to like 35%. It's expected to go to 80% in the next two decades. Um, you know, participation of women in the workforce, number of kids at schools. We have nine million uh, students nowadays uh, in, in the country, in kindergarten, high school, and universities, um, of which a very big chunk are young women. Uh, the economy has improved significantly off a very low base. So the country is finding its own feet. Um, and I think that we will have problems down the track as, as the entire region is going through problems. But these are, I think, growing pains. You know, the region, as, 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 as ugly as it looks right now from the outside, has also changed for the better in terms of the media, in terms of people having access to mobile phones, opinions, and so forth, which are very different to say a decade ago. But I think that we're all going to be in a better place in the next decade. I mean, I think that we have a lot of challenges ahead. I mean, we're about to go into Iraq, for example. In, you know, in Iraq, they're losing up to 100 individuals a day. Mm. Uh, because of suicide bombing. When you say we're going to go, you, your, your business is Moby. Yes. And you, you're available on the net so people could see what you're broadcasting on the net, eh? Do you stream on the net? Yeah, we, we stream a lot of our programs, like uh, especially news and current affairs. So what, what's the URL for them? Where uh, we find uh, Tolonews.com. Tolon. Tolo, T-O-L-O. Tolo News. News, one word, dot com. Tolonews.com. Now, when you say you're going into Iraq, are you, is that on free-to-air or satellite? Or? Sa satellite free-to-air. Satellite and free-to-air? It's satellite but free-to-air, so it's not encrypted. Oh, you I see. Oh, okay. You know, Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah. So you can, uh, it's all, it's all going to be advertising. Right, okay. And, uh, but it's a very interesting market. I mean, Iraq is a very wealthy country. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think, uh, it's producing, I don't know, four or five million barrels a day now. And, uh, you know, just the international oil companies alone will invest up to $100 billion in infrastructure in the next decade or so. 